What's up, YouTube? Today we're gonna be going over some more, uh, some more snot rags in the in the judicial system and in the media. Today we're gonna be going over the coverage behind the Fannie Willis dismissal and why supporting this is absolutely fucking insane. Why this wasn't dismissed is absolutely insane. You know. But again, you know, uh, you know. Uh, so the, the media brings divisiveness because they know it makes them money. They know it makes their parent company money. But we're going to go over that. Uh, if you want to, if you enjoyed the video, hit the like button, subscribe button, hit the bell notification, all that good stuff. That way, if you do stumble across this video, trying to get monetized, so we can get pushed in the algorithm way harder and absolutely piss off the establishment. Because, so we actually need that. And no, I'm not talking about a Trump 24 ticket. Anyways, let's get into it. Let's go. So first of all, tell me you look entitled without telling me you look entitled. Y you have a, a little, that like stereotypical, I hate you face, I hate this face. But in reality, we both know what you are. You're, you're a faker, you know? But let's, let's watch the video. Let's get over to Paula Reed, who has more information about what is in this decision from, Scott Mac from Judge Scott McAfee. Paula, what do you know? So the top line here is that the judge has ruled that the district attorney, Fonnie Willis, can continue on this case against former President Trump and over a dozen other defendants. Um, but he does address this issue of an appearance of a conflict, because the big question here is whether there was an actual conflict. The defendants were alleging that Fonnie Willis, you know, not only that she had this romantic relationship with the lead prosecutor on the Trump case, but that she also benefited financially. And he had... No, you're abs that's not the reason, actually. That's not even the, what the debate should be about. The debate should be about if a state prosecutor in their, like, in, in their election bed says, I'm going to arrest somebody, if that's a Sixth Amendment violation. And let's go over what the Sixth Amendment is for everybody here. To arm for uscourts.gov, the Sixth Amendment, basically, the, the four reasons you, you could apply this to get, uh, basically to get exonerated is, one, uh, the length of delay, which doesn't apply here. Second one, the reasons for the delay. Okay, meaning if they're on, on like, just keeping your case out because they want to try and find dirt on you, even though they actually have nothing, you can get a dismiss for that, right? Third, the accused demand for a speedy trial. It doesn't apply here. You can make a case for the Supreme Court stuff. You could have made a case for that. But anyways, um... For the Jack Smith indictments. Uh, number four. The pre the prejudice to the accused. I would argue someone who runs on prosecuting somebody and gets political donations from a super PAC to throw somebody in prison might have a prejudice against them. You know, they might actually have a biased opinion because of money. Like, duh. I'm sorry. This debate is stupid. It's absolutely absurd. But why do they cover this? Why don't they attack Trump for the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act? Where all he did was lower the lower the corporate tax and did not strengthen it to any regard. Where's the criticism for that? As a matter of fact, where's the criticism for not for literally letting Trump, okay, avoid having a Medicare law? N notice how every all this stuff Trump does, they can't they can't talk about it. Why? Because their biggest funders are J.P. Morgan, Bank of America. Those companies have massive vested interest in fossil fuels, so they can't attack them for literally doing the most unironic thing and making a climate change czar a climate denier. Like, a climate denier is the climate change czar, okay? He really did that, okay? Second thing, they can't talk about how that basically incentivizes more companies and has them take on less of that, which again, they're always, always going to do anyway. It's instead of strengthening laws on debt, they say, see, he lowered the corporate tax rate. Why? Because they know these actually do not affect the bank's bottom line. In fact, them reporting on this stuff in the way they do actually raises their bottom line. It makes them money. 
Because if you can say, oh, look at Trump, he's lowering the corporate tax, he's trying to fuck you, he's trying to do all these things, right? Instead of being like, yeah, you lower the corporate tax, but why not strengthen the laws with that? Like, don't you think that's kind of counter counterintuitive? That you claim to stand up for the American people, but don't strengthen the tax laws, in fact, you lower them, right? But they don't do that. They say, transphobic, racist, homophobic, bigot, which, by the way, has no meaning anymore, okay? They're the most debased terms. I, you, like, you could say someone's cock is racist, okay? It doesn't fucking matter at the end of the day. These terms mean literally nothing, okay? And what? We're supposed to... Those are real criticisms you can make about Trump. Do they do it? No. Why? Because their donors would be affected by it. Their advertisers would be affected by it. That's why they're trying to frame the debate from is she, uh, is the money thing a problem versus what she's actually doing, which is basically violating Trump's Sixth Amendment right, you know what I mean, to, to, a, to a prosecutor that doesn't have a prejudice against him. But anyways... Let's get in, let's go, let's get in, let's, be, let's get back in to this corporate hogwash known as this big bank propaganda machine known as CNN News. Had to, had to sort of do this analysis. Is it enough that this just looks bad, that there's an appearance of a conflict? Or did they need to prove, did the defendants, that Trump and his co-defendants need to prove that there was an actual conflict? Now, again, I say that DA Fonnie Willis can stay on this case, but also appears that the judge is saying that this appearance issue needs to be addressed before this can go forward. So this appears to be a pretty nuanced. Yeah, yeah. here's the thing. This is a Sixth Amendment violation. Again, they want to make it seem about the relationship rather than the fact she campaigned on these issues. Therefore, she should not be able to prosecute him because of an inherent prejudice due to financial super PAC gains. Why not talk about taking away super PACs? In fact, why not talk about regulating money in politics? Because their donors would, would lose money from that. Their donors, the these big banks, the medical establishment, the just entire hogwash of absolute corporate suck cocks who pay off politicians again they don't care about you that's why they're not attacking how she made super PAC how she took money from a super PAC and put it in her own pocket notice how they don't talk about that why they don't care to they are funded by the same big banks by the same people that put the, that money in her pocket do you think they're going to actually say anything about that? No. Why? Because they want to fuck you. Raw dog, no lube in your butthole. Okay? Th that's how they want to treat you, the people. Okay? That's how they... That's literally what they think of you. They think you're lower than whale shit. But let's continue. But the headline is that the district attorney at her office can stay on this case. But we continue to read uh, to learn more about exactly what the judge is saying about how you need to address the appearance of impropriety. All right, Paula Reed with the headline there. And it is a big one, which yes. is that district attorney Fonnie Willis can stay on the case. She is not disqualified. Ellie Hoding, her office is not disqualified. The Fulton County District Attorney's Office continue to prosecute these crimes. Yeah, that is the bottom line. Biggest takeaway here. Fonnie Willis can remain on the case. It sounds like the judge has found there was not an actual conflict of interest, not a provable financial conflict of interest. Important. Yes, it absolutely is. It absolutely is a conflict of interest. When you pull money from a super PAC and self-admittedly by the way and your whole campaign message is we're throwing this man in prison that you're actively prosecuting against okay like i said i have my criticisms about trump but i'm but i'm willing to call a spade a spade and say why not call out this as blatant corruption w why not because again your donors do not want you to take that angle. They want to create the narrative 
that Trump, in this case specifically, is not being unjustly prosecuted based on money they donate to said prosecutors. Through super PACs and their campaign, through the messaging, they don't bring this up because they don't care to. Because their sponsors and their advertisers would lose tons and tons of money from that, okay? That's why they don't bring it up. Then, And that's why they're trying to frame the debate as, is she, is, oh, well, it's the relationship, you know, we don't know about the relationship, all these things. They don't talk about it like that, and they're trying to frame the debate like that. Why? Because they control the narrative, people react to it, okay? All these political commentators, they're reacting to that narrative, that same narrative that I am currently reacting to, right? That's how they control the narrative. The difference is I'm willing to point out other things and why they want to control the narrative like this, because they want to, like I said, fist you right in your butthole, full blown, no lube, just straight skin to ass, okay? That's it. That's all they want to know. But let's continue. Now we'll see if the judge has some other sort of measures that he suggests. We'll see if he has any harsh words for Fonnie Willis or her office. But yes, the bottom line is the DA stays on the case. Hence, her office stays on the case. Hence, it can continue to move forward. And as we said before, they don't have a set trial date yet. The DA has asked for a trial in August. I don't think that's remotely realistic, but it will continue. It will not be put into this sort of suspended animation right. that otherwise would have gone into. Um, yep, CNN, the most trusted name in news, hired a Jesse Waters cuckold impersonator. I mean, I swear to God, tell me he's not just the SJW cuck version of this man. I mean, seriously, come the fuck on. Not only that, you J.P. Morgan butt boy, that's not what the debate should be about. The debate should be about a Sixth Amendment violation, the fact you ran on prosecuting someone and politically and are prosecuting them. Don't you think there's a level, at least a tiny level of prejudice there? But I'm pretty sure they're gonna go. Oh, my shit don't stink. Absolutely not. It does not stink. My farts smell like roses. I hate to break this to ya. Your shit stinks. And your fart smells like you have a dead rat up your ass. You absolute big bank propagandist piece of human excrement. You lying son of a bitch. I swear to God, you are J.P. Morgan's butt boy. The, honest to God, what the, you, you could not say, like, literally, the more you speak, the more you begin to sound like you are just shooting out J.P. Morgan's cock out of your mouth, okay? That's all you're doing. Your words are just J.P. Morgan spunk, all right? That's all you are. That's all you'll ever be because you have no talents in life. Go start a platform of your own. Go make a channel. You'll probably quit within a week. I, I guarantee you. Because you're probably gonna think you're probably not gonna have that self-validation fucking blue check looking head ass motherfuckers have from twenty like from 2020, 2021. You're gonna get extreme butter. Why is nobody watching my content? I am so interesting. L look at my look at my plastic surgery version of Jesse Waters' face. I'm perfect. Look, you want to attack me? You're racist. You're homophobic. Like, there's nothing. I have nothing wrong with me. I'm just an honest reporter. Y yeah, I know, buddy. But y keep thinking that, though. You know, you know. Keep keep thinking that. Uh, keep thinking that you're not just uh, Bank of America, J.P. Morgan's butt boy, and also the. Uh, you're not, you're not just a verbal prostitute for private insurance as well. Uh, yeah, you know, keep, keep thinking that, though. Keep thinking you're the most trusted name in news, buddy. You know, uh, if you say it, if, if you bang your head through a wall enough times, it might actually, you might actually break through, so. Just saying. But anyways, yeah, I figured I'd make this video real quick. Just a, just a little shit show. Anyways, if you like the video, like, comment, subscribe. Turn all the bell notifications on, that way we can... 
hopefully start getting pushed uh, and we can start really making an impact on these absolute these absolute you know these absolute dirt bags because their shit does stink their farts smell like a dead rat and we and everybody needs to continue to point that out because they're propagandists and they take the biggest they take the biggest funds by companies that hate your guts okay they hate you they hate everything about you and they and they don't give a single fuck if you live die become homeless what have you okay but anyways yeah like i said hit the like comment subscribe button turn the notification on peace